When you talk about soil ecology, you, it's best to think about the whole big picture. And when you're talking about turf grass management, especially fine turf, especially putting greens, there's a large component missing out of the system. And those are what they call the shredders. That's like the sow bugs, uh, the uh, millipedes, uh, worms, earthworms, ants, termites in some parts of the country. Those are the kind of organisms that um, take organic matter, they feed on the bacteria and the fungi that's on dead organic matter generally, and they break down the material into smaller pieces, increasing the surface area and breaking the ends, so to speak. What I mean by that is like if you can envision a stolen and bent grass that's protected with the waxy coat and it's got the high lignin cellulose, it's really resistant to breaking down. And um, there's like a pecking order as it pertains to the organic matter which our industry tends to fight routinely. And um, that pecking order is, starts with the shredders, where the shredders come in and they do what I just mentioned. They, they, they chew it down to smaller pieces, increasing the surface area. They help open up niches so the fungi or the bacteria can start breaking it down. So generally it's accepted that the more complex carbon material, the high lignin, high cellulose type material needs to be kind of shredded first, which is what we're doing here with the verticutter. Then generally the fungus moves in, if it's really complex, and that starts to break down the material, then there may be the actinomycetes and then the bacteria and so on as it gets more and more simplified. But as you can see with this tool here, it works wonderful. It helps stand the grass up, keeps the grain down to a minimum, and it's just a series of vertical blades that you can be aggressive with, and um, you can see it's really playable when you're done, but what it does, it picks this material up. Um, whether it's the uh, dead material or some of the live tissue, it shreds it, and it, uh, to me, this is our this is our shredder that uh, that ends up being part of the system as we work with probiotics to continue the cycling of the organic material and uh, allow for cycling nutrient playability with firmness, better air water movement, etc. Here you can see each blade is tipped with a little carbide tip on there. But what's unique about this machine is the slight bend in each one of these um, spikes. So it's a really a neat machine. It does a wonderful job shredding and um, dethatching if you're aggressive with the depth and certainly grooms the plant so it stands more upright. Felix will go ahead now and, and you can see how it works. And uh, we like doing this on our greens, our teas, and our approaches as often as we can get away with it. So you can see how much material we don't, it's still pretty early in the spring here, so we're not too aggressive with it, but um, you can see the amount of material it'll throw up and then uh, through the, throw up to the surface and uh, on the, uh, this will just dry up. And then how nice and upright the, uh, the blades themselves are. Uh, let's walk up here on the green real quick. We already did the greens. Now we're just doing the approaches. They just finished up the tees as well. And uh, we'll let the grass grow a little bit more this spring and get the machine back out and maybe be a little bit more aggressive next time. Yeah, so you can still see it kicked up some of the sand. We seen it top dress the greens last week, but I, here we go. You can see maybe faintly these lines. So I don't know if you can see them or not, but through the camera here, but I can see them. So the next time, so the machine went this way, so next time we'll go on an angle. Typically we like to stick with diamond shaped. We don't like to go at a 90. We usually go diamond shaped. So they'll go like at a 45 to uh, 45 degree to this angle. 
it's interesting when you speak to um, ecologists about the uh, corn belt they call it where we have the rich organic material that grows corn so well throughout the Midwest um, they contributed to the prairies and the prairies that would burn back uh, through lightning strikes or Native Americans apparently did it fairly routinely um, the prairies would burn and as, like you see here and what's left behind is a fair amount of ash, but also char, the biochar. Um, if you really study the flame closely, you'll see that there are uh, these pockets where it's fairly anaerobic, especially when the fire is really blazing and hot. And the heat itself ignites the oils and the tars that are inside the plant material and gases off to leave behind biochar like material and that's the material that's really persistent that lasts not just hundreds of years but they claim thousands of years and creates soils that are rich with nutrients because of the high CEC associated with the biochar the, um, the biology that it tends to harbor and it just feeds into this cycle of uh, depositing the material that enriches the soil that we're blessed with here throughout the, uh, the corn belt.